So we, our next speaker is from another um, uh, proud Nordic uh, um, giant and leader, uh, this time a bit of a pivot from the security industry to financial services, uh, and specifically rethinking, rethink, rethinking the channel experience and digitalization. I'm delighted to introduce Tommy Pushtornen, expert and lead developer at OPI Financial, OP Financial Group. Welcome, Tommy. Thank yeah, thank you, Claire. Welcome and welcome, everybody. Great. Right. Just wait for your Stop. slides to come up. Yeah. Looks great. Tommy, the floor is yeah. yours. So let's continue. So I'm talking about today about um, next level channel experience. Uh, I'm expert developer in OP financial systems and I'm responsible of our OP's API management team and its uh, responsibilities. So we manage API services and uh, I'm responsible also with the uh, API DevSec works, different clouds and providing mentoring and supporting people and their solutions. And I have plenty of likes and you can ask me about APIs, technical stuff and or games or entertainment as well. So what I would like you to first get a glimpse is, is that uh, when I'm talking about next level channel experience, I'm talking about the flexibility for answering different channel seeds and uh, showing your customers wherever they are located, basically. But um, before we can go into those details, we need to start from the beginning. So I'm going to be talking about the past experiences within OP and why by myself and uh, then going near to the current state of things and then looking into the next level. So how we get the onwards from the current state and what's uh, in the future. So a little about the past in the OPs and it's such. So past experiences, um, we have had the web services, custom solutions, and we have seen the dawn of the APIs uh, decades ago. So we defined the new service platforms at OP in 2013. We installed our API management platform in 2014 and uh, year before ADS or something like for providing API management solutions. And uh, after that, we productized that. But if you can see those numbers, my slides are pretty messed up for some reason, but uh, we were running in a metrics about having few APIs running in API management solutions, having one API product and having few customers and traffic in a few hundred thousands at that point. But then came 2016 and we strategized that the APIs are the way to go and it's our initial and API first integration pattern along with the events and that kind of things. And 2016 was also when I joined OP. So when you get to the 2017, we start looking into that, uh, how we can enhance the experiences and how we can expand uh, our API solutions. So first we started with the basic things though, so we created an OP REST API specification that defines how our APIs will be looking and feeling going onward. Also, we started uh, utilizing our API management solution. So pushing our API numbers to the 60s and uh, products to the 20s and getting plenty of more API consumers joining our API management solution and uh, consuming services via API management. And traffic is reaching at this point time 10 million requests uh, on a weekly basis. Then came 2018 and we started opening up our APIs because the PSD2 was coming. We launched OP Developer, provided uh, public access to our APIs and ramp out our developer site for external usage. And that also multiplied our amount of APIs. So we jumped from the tens to the hundreds. We provided uh, instead of uh, 20 products, we had uh, 60 products and we have consumers uh, jumping near to the, well, doubling and traffic multiplying in a, from few million recons to the 
60 million requ requests per week range. And continuing, now we have APIs, now we have APIs as products, and now we are launching our API marketplace, and we are launching our OP APIs as capabilities. So we established the OP API team, and we launched our internal developer site at that point, and PST2 was a big change in financial sector. So we see changes in those numbers in multitude. So we jump from few endpoints to the <laughs> few more hundred endpoints and from the products uh, to the hundred products. But for our cons consumer base, jumped uh, from under hundreds to the <laughs> something nearing 800 and without traffic multiplying in three times to the previous year. And uh, the next thing what comes with traffic and usage is that we notice that we need to improve our things. So operational excellence for, uh, for our 2020 target. So because we are jumping now from few hundred million requests per week to 600 million. So we are multiplying by three our traffic. We are providing more APIs, more services, more products, and having over a thousand consumers for our APIs. So providing the best possible experience and reliability to our API and product offerings was the key for the 2020. And then we are closing into the now section. We have <laughs> quickly gone over the, something like eight years of OPS API future, but uh, then we are jumping out to the last year. So last year we are pushing our APIs and their capabilities to the next level. So jumping from the first version of the APIs to the version two, three, four, and so forth. So providing better services constantly and introducing new technical capabilities. Uh, so because our services are now going from different products, SaaS services into the more containerized based uh, and running in microservices level, we need to introduce uh, service mesh and service management into that uh, as well. So that we, our developers can utilize the latest and greatest technologies and have the reliability and management uh, also within the execution environment. So when we have services, really small microservices, basically functions, making requests to other functions, we have a service mesh capable of managing that traffic and ensuring and collecting the metrics that we need on our API levels and uh, otherwise in monitoring and such. So that is was a really important point of, for us. So. Having the technical capabilities is one thing, but having the productized and easy to utilize version of those is our, has been always our well priority. So what this actually means, what is our current OPS API management and service management that enables this next level channel experience is that we have APIs available for each and every client, depending where they are located. They can be located wherever. So we provide uh, public and uh, private gateways to all of our consumers. And uh, we e enable to them to be present at all channels or different changes. And uh, we provide discovery and onboarding to via our developer sites. And we enable third parties and products and SaaS services and other providers, providers to join us so that we provide their services as part of our API management, basically. So really, regardless where the service is located, what technology or what component is providing the actual functionality, we got the service API available in our API management so that uh, clients never really don't have to think about where they are getting the service because the service is always available via nearest API gateway.
And the one main thing is that we have the unified user experience and developer experience of the, our APIs and functionalities. Because the uh, 2017 OP REST API specification has been working really well for us. So our look and feel of the APIs is similar. So, and uh, they implement same kind of uh, API security mechanisms. So the clients really don't have to learn how to use our services. They can just request them with the authentication and authorization that they have. And with the instructions that they can easily find from our developer site. And this also enables us to collect all relevant API metrics from our gateways and uh, also from the service mesh level. So omnichannel API metrics and measuring value is really important for us because we need to know that who's doing what with our APIs and are they having got that, this kind of success and or, or they're experiencing errors or failures. And what else? Yeah, we provide API security. So the biggest business enabler is having secure APIs available. So APIs are secure. They have layers upon layers on technical enablers that builds up the trust and security for our APIs and services. So everything is uh, monitored, everything is uh, verified. We build trust, but we also verify everything. And we have all different kind of analytics and intelligence for uh, identifying different kind of threats because we are providing essential services to our clients and they need to be working and they need to be secure and safe to use. So security is a big component and uh, it's uh, important enable for next level general experience. But what also is important is the developer experience in action. So publishing API to our API management solution is an API that's a, an API product that's available in a developer site and anybody can request onboarding it internally, of course. And it's just posting an API's request with payload, simple payload displayed in a picture. So it contains name, it contains location where I want my API to be available for the clients. And it defines targets where the traffic should be routed from that API gateway. And it provides this kind of base path that uh, contains the service context that the endpoint actually owns and its version. And with this request, our developers can uh, publish new APIs in less than 100 milliseconds or so. And uh, those are evergreen results with the best policies and security enforcements in place. So it's really simple to just uh, enable our developers to have success quickly so that they execute one request and then they can try out their own API from the nearest API gateway and provide it to different consumer or potential consumers. The same API provides also this typical capabilities for undoing your actions and updating your actions if needed. And it enables in Kubernetes level to define this kind of a custom resource definitions that uh, you have this declarative means of managing your API. So you just tell that, okay, I want to, my service to be located here and uh, API management to be in this state and we handle the rest. So quick and easy and mostly painless. And the results that developers get, yeah. APIs will be available. They can be instantly tested after that initial request, assuming everything went fine and uh, there wasn't a bad request or anything like that. And it implements our security and enforcements on the target gateways, depending on the service security level. It provides accessibility and seamless connectivity. So if you define that uh, my API needs to be available in both on-premise sites or cloud site or different cloud site or for the public access or handled there. So you just define where you want your API to be available and we will publish it to there. 
with all the monitoring and metrics in place. And that provides the auditing and forward handling also. So we got the full traceability of our API usage and it's everything related to that. Then next step would be just uh, productizing and providing documentation so that the different clients have easier life with your APIs and monitoring the life cycle and uh, seeing that uh, how they are utilizing your APIs and uh, how successful they are. So having quick wins is the current state of things. So you can easily provide uh, an, an API to any consumer regardless where your API functionality is actually provided or where the client is located. So our this year's objective is just to push the APIs to the next level, provide the best, even better developer experience and eBay the, providing these kind of business enablers so that we can, like Oliver was saying, the, uh, connect different kind of ecosystems and such uh, to our own and individually provide services regardless of what actually is the uh, service provider behind the scenes. And these enable our next level channel experience current topic. So the next level, so the important stuff. So I started with the next level experience and it's a short and brief description. So offering flexibility for sales and operative channel selection, but it's mostly about the customers. So unifying the channel experience, delivering, delivering our services and our security in a way that our clients and customers can reach our services depending on their choices. So providing services and support to the users where they are located. If they want to use our web channel, that's okay. Services are there. Mobile channel, it's there. Third party channels, it's also there and so forth. And what else is the kind of the beef the, here is that uh, having the cross channel progression. So if your client, well, not client, but the customer and user starts and kind of process this kind of long living process behind the scenes and uh, well, calls some of our clerks, some brands uh, start some progress becoming a customer, uh, applying for loans, uh, applying a support or anything like that. It uh, gets to the some state that can be easily continued on different devices or channels so that uh, we can add the call and move into the mobile or our web channels, for example. And all of these are enabled for our next level API services because APIs are important things and we are talking in API days. So. So we manage our APIs as a product. They are easily discoverable. They are easily published and services are always available for from the nearest gateway. That's the main things. So this how things is about enabling the next level of service availability. So services are available in all channels. They provide uh, similar data and functionality regardless of those channels and they answer the different needs of the customer, different customers, customer segments. So maybe end users in self-service channels or end users with uh, in assisted channels or developers or applications or robots or other systems consuming our services. We can answer those and provide the services that they need. And like I mentioned earlier, service providers can differ. So actual functionality be, can be provided by different end technologies, custom solutions, infrastructures, both products or something, but that doesn't need to be anything that's visible for the actual clients. And our services are designed for usability. So we provide the next level channel experience by designing a great API services and products. Yeah, so. That's one thing. And after we have public, published our new APIs and services, we measure our success. So we find out our customer and their needs, and we found out how successful they are with our APIs and services. 
and we provide value then and constantly improve providing even better value when opportunities appear and yeah Next level service provider enabler is making the API management easy, basically, and having happy developers that know what to do and know, know have the best tools and technologies available for them. So regardless of, of the backend technologies or service implementation, or it, we can provide it as a service, as an API, as a product. And automate everything and uh, yeah, quick and easy wins. And yeah, the next level is about having the developer experience exponentially better and having the happiness all around. Yeah. So that's it. Tommy, thank you. Right on time. Um, uh, we've got a question. Uh, it's coming from the chat from, from Jonas. Um, asking, what would you identify as the major pain points that you've had um, in OP's API journey? What are some oh. of the biggest challenges facing you as you move forward in improving your channel experience? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, biggest pain points and challenges, uh, it was kind of a getting people to join in. So, we had to tools and technologies early on, and we had the capabilities of providing these kind of things, but uh, getting actual people to utilize them, not just uh, doing things by their own way. So that was a kind of a learning path. So uh, people are doing the things, people are <laughs> the ones that are answering business needs and providing those services. So and there are developers that are actually implementing those things. So having those developers trust and the capabilities as a tool for your target goal is the kind of the key and my recommendation. So, and challenges facing uh, moving forward, improving channel experience. Uh, yeah, so kind of the splintering is also one thing that uh, if, like I demonstrated that we have capabilities of providing services easily, but still, if we are not known and or people somehow don't know how to utilize our capabilities, they might build their own solution. And you find out it later on that, okay, we have a different new API gateway located in different kind of cloud that was a used ever before. And then you need to just, um, start paying up the technical debt and um, get that solution in line, basically. But yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it absolutely. all goes so As your API is right. maturing, ensuring that you're not um, uh, ending up with uh, a technical debt group yeah. um, associated with what should be your new and your future. Um, I, I'm just one last question before we finish up. But, um, can you share with us examples of your most successful public or private APIs? Um, mm -hmm for your Most. customers and employees. Well, I would <laughs> say that it's, a, well, the management API that I showed, that was one thing that's uh, easy to use and it simplifies so many concerns that the developers have because API management in technical technology point of view and for developers might be not familiar or easy topic. So making that uh, quick and simple, that's uh, one thing. And the, one, the other thing is that uh, providing internal open APIs that provides all the data, all the visibility into our current API management configurations. And well, not all, we hide some sensitive data and secrets, but most of the data, having that as an open and available for anybody, just requesting it, it that's uh, kind of uh, my biggest success also, so yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, Tommy, for um, generously giving us your time this afternoon. It's really great to hear your story and um, we look forward to following your success. Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you, Tommy.